Hey guys, today's video is going to be exploring sleep expectations for the nine to 12 month old baby. So watch on to find out what you might be expecting over the next few months. But if you're new here, hi, I'm Jen. I'm from jenniferbutler.com.au and I'm an early parenting specialist that's dedicated to helping mothers enjoy the intimate early days and years of parenthood by helping them to understand, enjoy and support their baby. So if that sounds like something that you would love to hear about, then head over to my website, sign up to my mailing list, and when you do, you get sent this fabulous clean sleeping guide that I've created for you, which is a guide I use to help parents understand what they need in terms of their baby's sleep and ways to improve it immediately. So head on over, sign on up to that, and you'll also be notified of when I release these new videos once a fortnight on a Tuesday. So the first area I'm going to talk about is gross motor skill development. So during the age of nine to 12 months of age, there's gonna be some huge development when it comes to your baby's gross motor skills. We're talking crawling, standing, they'll have been sitting, but they'll be starting to cruise, perhaps even your baby has started to walk. Now, all of these awesome skills are obviously inevitable and a wonderful progression of what your baby's doing, but they can play out at sleep time. A baby who has learnt to stand when they don't want to go to bed might stand in their cot and protest and all of a sudden you're facing a whole new array of issues. So understanding that this is an inevitable process, that babies love to practice their new skills uh, during bedtime and at sleep, um, and also just making sure that you allow for this period of transition while they learn these new skills is the key to understanding how these gross motor skills can impact sleep. So another area that is often observed by parents of nine to 12 month old babies is separation. So, and it's particularly separation anxiety. So separation anxiety is when your baby becomes really distressed at being separated from you. And this can be when you leave a room, this could be when you drop them off at daycare, and it can also be during sleep. So understanding that for some babies, they'll be affected by separation, separation anxiety a lot more than other babies. And knowing that it is at this age that it tends to be around its worst, it generally peaks by around 18 months. But for some, it might be peaking at this age. And if you've got a baby who's suffering from severe separation anxiety, being able to understand a way to approach settling is crucial here. It is possible for your baby to sleep separately from you, but to be able to achieve that in a way that respects your baby's emotional health as well as your own. So getting in touch with someone to create a plan that allows for both of these is crucial and a sleep consultant like myself is the perfect person to talk to in this situation. But also just understand that it is a transient period and it will improve as your baby begins to trust that these separations are fleeting and that you do return. So in terms of nighttime sleep, if your baby is having good feeds during the day, they're on three meals of solids, which they usually are around this age group, and they're getting plenty of hydration in during the day, then this means that they can go up to 12 hours overnight without needing to have another feed. So if you are giving feeds over this time of night and it doesn't bother you and your baby's happy and thriving, then there's absolutely no reason to change that. However, for those families who are still getting up and wishing to change that, then it's good to know that you can expect that your baby between nine to 12 months is capable of sleeping through the night without needing feeds. They may still wake during the night if they uh, require a bit of help in getting back to sleep, or sometimes they do just need a little bit of thirst or a bit of comfort. Um, but understanding that feeding isn't the top priority for nighttime wakings at this age. In terms of settling, again, if given the opportunity, your baby will be able to manage ways of putting themselves to sleep. So making sure that you're allowing your baby some space and a little bit of opportunity to practice those self-settling skills is what's going to allow those skills to emerge. So just understanding that they are there if we give them a chance between the nine to 12 month age group. Well, that's all from me today. I will be back in another fortnight with a brand new video. If you wanna be notified of that, head on over to my website and sign up to my mailing list. You'll receive my free clean sleeping guide. And I'll be back here again in another fortnight to bring you a new video.